Ines, Sir Hairless here. Today we are back with Diana and Kudinova and this is What a Wonderful World. This was our members poll winner of which Diana reaction to do next. The original song is a song that everyone knows. It is a lovely song, there's no denying that. It's just such a positive song, it probably triggers memories in pretty much everyone. Deanna's version is with Brandon Stone. I've heard this name before, I've received a lot of recommendations for a performance of those two together, and the song is called The Day You. Dot, dot, dot. That is on my list for the future, don't worry, but I guess this is my introduction to Brandon Stone. This song, it's often associated with Christmas, that's because of its style, it has many musical elements that are characteristic of Christmas music. Rather than the subject matter, the honors video does say, wish you a happy new year, so it is, I guess, in the theme of Christmas and or the new year. So, let's get straight into it. I was going to pause at the end of that verse and now we've got a beat coming in. Well, I'll tell you what, I like this. I, I really, really like this. Funny as well, one of the keys on the piano is, uh, is stuck just here. I like how they've kept this in. It's clearly an old piano, probably doesn't really work, but it has character. It has character. And the aesthetic of the video as well with these snowflakes in the corner, the whole camera kind of moving. Yeah, it's just nice. I, I like it. Why I pointed to my arm, I didn't want to pause, but... I was saying I have goosebumps immediately. If you've not seen my first time ever hearing Diana, that was Can't Help Falling In Love, please check that out because my body just went into paralysis mode. She's famous for that polyphonic element in her voice and here we are hearing it so much more than in my, some of my previous reactions, but we'll come back to that in a moment. I also would like to point out a few things on the piano, but first, the next couple of minutes will be a mention of something that's really helped me with my channel recently, and it's helped with my productivity, with my health, which ultimately means I can put out more videos for you, and it's a huge, huge support of the channel. You'll notice that now I'm at a different angle, and I just want to spend the next minute or two talking about health, particularly back health. I sit down all day for my full-time job and then after that I sit down all evening for Sir Hairless. So it's important to make sure my posture is good. I've been thinking about getting a standing desk for ages now and you'll see that I am now standing. And that's because Flexi Spots have very kindly sent me their next generation height adjustable E7 Pro desk. This is a huge upgrade to my previous desk. It's bigger. They sent me 160 by 80 centimeters in maple color. Now I would never talk about a product that I don't use and that I don't fully advocate and fully believe in. I've been using this for a couple of weeks. It is a game changer. Firstly, it looks nicer. We can see by the pictures here, old desk versus new. It was very, very simple to put together. I did have the help of someone, but they send you the tools you need. The instructions are very, very clear. And as part of the setup process, the relevant cable management items are provided and cable management just helps keep the workspace looking tidy. And in my opinion, really does help with productivity. It has some very cool features too. Dual motor powered legs to make the height adjustment very, very easy. You can adjust it to any height you want by moving it up or down, all done at this switch here. And you can preset four heights. I have my sitting height preset, my standing height preset, and my filming sitting height. Another huge bonus for me is my chair now fits under my desk, saving space. Even though my desk is bigger than before, having this extra real estate on the desk is so, so helpful. As for the health benefits, there are so 
so many. It reduces back pain. It promotes better posture and reduces strain on your spine. My back was starting to hurt a lot and this has helped in just two weeks. It improves circulation and boosts your energy levels. Sitting down for hours at a time and then you suddenly stand up, you've been revitalized with this new energy. It's crazy. More focused, you have more movement. Naturally, you burn more calories standing up. So it supports weight management. And these desks are suitable for home, for an office environment. The desk is very sturdy. As you can see, I'm filming now, no wobbles. You can even sit on it and it's completely fine. I could not recommend FlexiSpot more. So if you're considering getting one, please do so at the link in the description. There's a special offer sale month going on now in November 2024. And they're so confident in their products, they offer a 10 year warranty and a 60 day free return policy. So once more, a big thanks to FlexiSpot for sending me this E7 Pro standing desk. Really, really, it's, it's a game changer. I love it. Okay, back to the music. So let's just take a listen to her entry. I see trees of green, red roses too. You, you can feel the voice. You, you don't just hear it, you, you feel it. We all respond differently to different types of music and different musical textures. Her voice, especially when it does have that polyphonic element sounding really strongly, my body just reacts to it. It's crazy. And I love the air she's using, just such a soft tone, so light. Oh, really nice, really, really nice. The opening, always so, so important with a piece of music. It is kind of like a doorway into what we might expect with this song and I really like this arrangement so cue Sir Hellas from the future hop over to the piano and we'll have a little discussion about it. This arrangement is in a different key to the original so I will transpose the original into Diana's key so they're in the same key it will sound nicer. So I'll start off with the original song. We'll notice the arpeggiated bass line which goes like... This is compound time. All compound time means is that we have two main beats. So one, two, and each of these main beats is divided into three smaller beats. And they are these, that's one. And then the next one. So when we put them together, there's one, there's the other, and then again, the emphasis is very much on this. One, two, three, one, two, three. In the Diana arrangement, there are quite a few differences as we can tell by the sound. It's still in compound time. It's still one, two, three, one, two, three. But the stress, instead of on this arpeggiated figure, is now on the rising bass. Also, we get this nice clash at the start. And then the rhythms for this bit, instead of one, two, three, one, two, three, they become one, two, one, two, one, two. So instead of two beats of three, it's three beats of two, we can think of it as. One, two, one, two, one, two. And the final chord as well, we'd expect it to end here, but they actually end, which is now G minor. Of course, it doesn't sound that sad because of the context and the music continues. So the difference in styles between and starting straight away with And the rhythmic energy of this bit. Well, actually. Back to Diana's voice. I was just listening to this bit again. If you've seen my other videos, especially with Dimash, you'll know that I love the airy voice. So I've already mentioned Diana's using a lot more air with her sound now to create this really light soft sound. I love it. But another thing she's doing, it's her, well, the type of vibrato she's she's choosing to use here. Vibrato, the wobbles, it's often used to lift the voice up. It's why when people sing with a straight tone, it's much more difficult to be in tune. Often they will be flat, especially when using their chest voice. Vibrato brings the sound up and it helps disguise any pitch inaccuracies. It's also useful for a number of other reasons, but that's one of the things. When you 
you have complete mastery over it, like Diana does, she's really pushing the limits here, seeing how much it can rise while still being in tune, and that's what creates this light sound. I see the blue for me and you. And you hear the last note there, it almost does sound like it's a quarter tone sharp, but it also doesn't because of, it's really weird. Uh, it's difficult to try and talk about. I think the point is, I love it. Now, I often choose not to talk about accents, especially when someone is singing not in their first language. I think her English is great. Yes, there is a little bit of an accent, but it really enhances the sound. This phrase I'm about to play, it's the same note. She chooses no vibrato straight tone until the end of the last note. And a combination of all these things, her pronunciation, the vowel sounds, to me, it's just quite mystical almost. And I think to myself, what a wonderful Chromatic bass line, dum, dum. quite a contrast to her soft sustain note at the top. I see skies of blue. And then we get the next verse with the uh, instrumentation coming in, the strings, the double bass, which is very, very typical of this lovely, lovely style. I see skies of blue. It makes me want to grab a hot chocolate, sit down. I don't have a fireplace, but if I did, fireplace on and just listen to this song. So if you'd like to support me and make my dreams of having a hot chocolate come true, you can donate me one at the buy me a coffee link down below. Ooh, and clouds of white. The melody there on clouds of white in the original we get. But Deanna goes. That reminds me of the opening theme in the piano where we get the note that goes up. Diana's doing that little note up as well, changing the original melody slightly, but I think it's quite thematic in line with the piano in the introduction. All right, let's carry on from where I paused. We had a beat coming in. The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, or else on the faces. What a wonderful world. Oh, we've changed to swing rhythm. I was so relaxed with that. And now we've got swing rhythm, which makes me want to get up and dance. I've got goosebumps again. I think my body is reacting maybe a bit more than my mind is, which I always find a fascinating phenomenon with uh, with music. All right, we'll do our second pause here, go over some of what we heard. I like Brandon Stone from what I've seen. He, you know, he's clearly loving the music and he's just, he seems very personable. I, yeah, I like him. The colors of the rainbow Nice beats, nice percussion, not too overbearing. Makes us want to click along on the very infrequent strong beats. Diana's phrasing again, great. This time the slow vibrato, the slow wobbles. In the sky. It's almost like just singing two notes and alternating between them. Everyone has different styles of vibrato. Quite a few singers can choose how quickly they do their vibrato. And I really, really like Diana's choice here. And she kind of teases us with a little voice crack. <laughs> Which is technically like a, a small yodel, and then we get a couple more. It's a friend chicken head saying, How do you do? I'll call it an intentional crack, but technically it is a, a yodel. We know that she is very good at yodeling. <laughs> Works well with the kind of growth that we're hearing as well, both in terms of pitch, her melodies moving up, and the music in the background just seems to be growing a bit, a bit more thick texturally. Brandon, loving it. Do again. you do? They really say I love you. I 
here, babe. And the strings in the background, they are really, really jazzing up the harmony, getting some very non-standard chords, just like here. Some nice suspension, some nice dissonance. I hear, babe. Along with... And then if we add in the bass part and bring it into the same octave, which is where the real dissonance comes, then we get this. And then the bass part. And then the next chord. And then the bass part. So together. And even though the piano is not overbearing, it's not the most complicated of accompaniments, more complicated than we might think. I love how it gets its moments and it suddenly comes through, such as here. This and then takes a back seat, handed back over to Diana, who is obviously the main focus. And in the build up to the, the swing section, which I'm very excited to hear, she is modernizing the sound. You'll know what I mean by that. These runs, a bit more typical of R&B, and the glissandos, the sliding between the notes. All right, let's carry on from the swing bit. we've changed back so we're kind of near the end actually it looks like that swing section was short-lived really enjoyed it though when i was younger and people would ask what would your dream job be you know if money and the cost of living didn't matter and i said it would be to be in a jazz quartet either the drummer or the double bassist i just think it's so cool and it would be to play things like this all throughout the swing section just listening to the walking bass or the drums, it's just such a cool beat. And when you couple it with the syncopations and the offbeats of the piano, with these nice staccato, very, very rhythmic chords, I wasn't expecting to be listening to jazz uh, today, I'll tell you that. So we changed to swing. We can hear that, obviously. Simply put, what swing is. Before I mentioned we were in compound time where you have two main beats, dumb. Dumb. Each one subdivided into three smaller beats. One, two, three. One, two, three. Those three smaller beats are equal lengths. In swing, they're not equal. So you get chumpa 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 chumpa. One, two, one, two. As you can hear in the bass, in the drums, and well, in Diana, uh, in Diana's little. Would you call this scat? In Diana's scatting here. Jumpa, jumpa, jumpa. And then in true jazz style, she starts to do something that sounds quite improvisatory, whether it is or not, we don't know, but she's much more free with the rhythms now. And again, it creates all these syncopations, cross rhythms, very, very rhythmic, as is typical of jazz. <laughs> And the piano as well, much more of a moving role now, much more prominent. This bit, again, Brandon, he made me laugh here. He has a nice little chromatic inflection. He looks straight at the camera. That's cool, isn't it? That, that strained effect. And again, she deprioritizes tuning here. The effect, uh, the atmosphere she's creating by singing like this is the priority. People going by. Yeah, really cool. Really, really cool. Let's carry on until the end. Oh, sorry, there was just one bit before we carry on that I really enjoyed. I, I, I love you. Off beats between the piano and the voice, but because it's swing, they are not equal lengths. Uncha, uncha, uncha. Really catchy. I see them blue for me and you. And I think to myself. 
in that last section the very last chord of course has the super tonic in there so the tonic the root note number one in the scale and then the super tonic note number two as well as many other notes but the real unexpected bit what a wonderful we're expecting but we get I also love how the piano that we see in the video is just not at all the same as what we're hearing. So I wouldn't be surprised if this piano there is kind of just mute. They can't hear anything. They're just listening to a backing track. Oh, it's just a nice song though, isn't it? And I think to myself What a wonderful world. Yeah, I really do like everything about it. And the, the swing surprise as well. I really like Brandon from what I've seen here. He seems like quite a character. Deanna, this is definitely one of my favorite performances by her that I've seen so far. Such control over her voice. So versatile in her voice. Opening up with the polyphonic elements and then kind of progressing to just a lighter, bit more of a modern sound. Still true to the jazz style. Yeah, great arrangement. Really enjoyed that one. I don't really have much more to say. So we can leave that one there. Thank you to everyone who voted on this poll and recommended the song in the first place. Please comment down below other songs by Deanna you'd like me to do in the future. As I mentioned before, this makes me want to sit by the fire with a hot chocolate. So to make my dream come true, you can buy me a hot chocolate at the buy me a coffee link down below. It's one of the best ways to support me in this channel. And as always, thank you very, very much for watching. Would appreciate a like and subscribe. If you enjoy these videos, please consider joining the Patreon linked on the screen now for exclusive content. And I will see you next time.